Good evening, everyone. I wanted to follow up um, on my video that I made on Christmas um, regarding the Amanita and its deep roots in different religious traditions, um, primarily Christian Christianity, um, but also others, um, many others, Gnosticism, um, the Vedas, and really just so many, but there were two books that I didn't uh, get to show you guys um, in that last video. So uh, The Psychedelic Gospels um, by Jerry B. Brown and Julie M. Brown, um, and then Mushrooms and Mankind by James Arthur. And I do think that I mentioned uh, Mushrooms and Mankind in that video, um, but I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on these two specific books um, because they have a lot of interesting concepts and information, um, images and documentation when it comes to um, the roots of the Amanita in the Christian uh, religion and other religions. So um, you will notice that both of these books have the same picture on them. Um, the book, or, or let's talk about the picture. So this image, which is uh, God um, with several different mushrooms, blue and red, um, comes from the, oh my gosh, so bad with names, but it is the, um, excuse me, excuse me. So it comes from the great Canterbury Palter. The Great Canterbury Palter is a Christian text. It's like a very holy site in England. Um, and as you can see here, there's kind of like a story that's being told. There's like God in this um, red either Amanita cap or maybe like a mandala that you would see if you took a uh, plant or fungal entheogen. Um, followed by um, God with a book. Um, now, obviously, their depiction of God looks a lot like Jesus, and I do believe that this has to do with the New Testament, which I'll get into in a minute here. But um, this is the book of the Word. So first there was light, then there was the Word, and then there were mushrooms, um, blue ones and red ones. So in this book, um, they think that these are like certain species of psilocybin mushrooms, like a paniolus and a psilocybe cubensis. Um, and then they were relating the red ones to be Amanita. Obviously they don't really look like Amanita, but there's kind of like images of Amanita on the mushroom. So I've noticed in these texts that like things are very much up for interpretation, like all religious texts, but this, these interpretations have a, they really believe that the mushroom, um, was part of the foundations of the religion. They believe that it was the sacrament for the Christian church, um, the New Testament, like the followers of Jesus. And um, especially in this book, they talk about how um, the Christian religion went from being something that was like a fearsome God that was like all about punishment to like a more compassionate religion. And um, both books talk a lot about the Last Supper um, and the consumption of like the blood of Christ and the, and the flesh of Christ. And they really believe that that was the Amanita muscaria. So they even go as far as to talking about how the, how Jesus on the cross looks like an Amanita mushroom shape. Um, so, you know, you can like go <laughs> as far into these interpretations as you feel comfortable with, but they went real far. Um, but some of this stuff is like super, super obvious to me. Like here's Adam and Eve with the serpent and the mushrooms. Here's like more mushrooms. Here's the leper healing um, with mushrooms down here. And um, if you hear my dog um, making little grubler sounds, I apologize. She just likes to be in on the action. So um, the last supper and there's all these um, different interpretations, um, different theories that they have. Um, there were a couple of points. Here's a picture of a, a nun with a mushroom. I mean, that might be something different, but it sure looks like a mushroom to me. Um, here's Adam and Eve, and they say this looks like an uh, Amanita muscaria. So, like, 
sometimes you might feel like they're drawing at straws and sometimes you might think like they're really onto something. It's a personal, it's a personal thing. So, um, the books are super interesting though. Um, here they have some depictions of, um, an angel, one of the angels, it might be Archangel Michael, I forget, but he's holding a mushroom. Um, and then ancient Egyptian stuff. This book went in a lot into like different religions and different religious cults like Gnosticism. It went into like some Indian religions. Um, it talked about the Santa Claus um, uh, story, talks about Maria Sabina. So this one was talking about the sacred blue and the sacred red mushrooms. Um, there was a part here that I wanted to read to you. So um, yeah, he talks about right here he's talking about the um ex uh, i say unto you except you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day so they're really um like focused on that last supper thing same with the james arthur book he goes into that a lot um here's another one uh let no man therefore come unto me now, nor seek after me these forty days. So I took the five men as he commanded me, and we went into the field and remained there. And the next day, behold, a voice called me, saying, Estras, open thy mouth and drink that I give thee to drink. Then I opened my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full, as it were, with water, but the color of it was like fire. And I took it and drank, and when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered understanding, and wisdom grew in my breast, for my spirit strengthened my memory, and my mouth was opened and shut no more. So really, there's <laughs> the sacramental consumption of entheogenic plants and fungi have been documented in pictures. Um, the Mexican, I'll go into it in another video with the Utatono Codex. Um, I'm hoping to do an interview with someone who knows a lot more about that than I do, but um, that's focused on the sacred blue mushroom, and this is kind of a follow-up to my Christmas video, so I wanted to focus on these books about the Amanita primarily, but um, this book was kind of like a story, and they go, this couple, they're, they're very interested in finding evidence about um, the sacrament sacramental mushroom and so they travel they go around they go to that place in England and and all, to all these places and they learn a lot and um it's kind of cute story they have some some really great pictures in it and some good um some good excerpts and some some interesting concepts like some interesting theories it's good stuff I definitely recommend it I would love to see that book um, even when they went to go see that Canterbury book, they were like <laughs> stopped and people tried to make it hard for them to, to get a hold of that information when they traveled there and stuff. So it's kind of, it's kind of wild. This book really resonated with me in a lot of ways because, um, the author is like super, um, he's an advocate for our fundamental human right to consume uh, sacred plants and mushrooms um, for personal enlightenment and he talks a lot about how things have been hidden by the religio religio governmental complex basically he calls it and he says that our sovereignty with these plants and fungi um, and utilizing them for for our own um, connection with the source or God whatever you want to call it is fundamental in breaking us out of this like war game and basically um, saving us from the destruction of humanity. So he is very serious in his message. And um, I really uh, liked some of the stuff I, that he wrote in here just about like health, so uh, just about the sovereignty to take these things and to um, go back to like a more indigenous mindset and a shamanic um approach to religion um he had a lot of um the same like excerpts from the bibles and whatnot the new testament um to show that they were consuming like the mana he was explaining the mana and like certain um like fasts that are um, famines that were happening and stuff and how it pertained to possibly like the amanita muscaria being the, the sacrament like they didn't need to eat because they were eating and drinking amanita um 
lots of like theories and whatnot, like interpretations of these texts, but some of them really do have a lot of, like I can see where uh, it's convincing. And like, here's like the Mithra egg. There's some great pictures. This looks like a mushroom. There's a lot of al allusion to um, pine trees, pine cones, the pineal gland in, in the Catholic church. And um, yeah, I mean, if you've read even the uh, the Old Testament, there's a, there's a large section about like how to make incenses, sacred incenses and whatnot. Like the plants are sacred, so. Um, so he's saying that we cannot um, be controlled. So here's J Jesus with his mushroom cap or aura. Um, that the fact that they are hiding the connection with the mushroom um, to the church is just another form of like control. And it's really like the ultimate form of control. Um, he thinks that drugs should be legal and also well there's a whole lot of stuff in here that you can check out but i was mostly interested in the mushroom stuff so um it's a short book you can get them both on i like thrift books that's where i've been buying a lot of books lately just trying to support like something new and <laughs> um they deliver up here pretty uh reliably and fast so i like thrift books a lot but yep they're on amazon and um, there are a lot more too, but just wanted to kind of talk about those two books a little bit tonight. So thank you for tuning in. Please uh, like and subscribe, do all the things. I'm on Instagram at Church of the Sacred Fruit. Um, I was hiding for a long time, but I am coming out of my shell and I feel that um, this stuff needs to come to light, that our health sovereignty and our um, our well-being depends on a connection with nature and when that is cut off by the government or by you know the powers that be um we really suffer our health suffers and our mental health suffers our spiritual health suffers and um the more we talk about this stuff bring it to light and get together um even if we're far away we can do it online now um it's beneficial for everybody and it's beneficial for the planet as a whole. So thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful evening.